Making ready. Kavik waited for her behind the hospital in the circle of trampled grass. Were all of those people from Bin Er? He asked Yang Chen once she emerged. He sounded calm in the way one had to force. Most of them are, Yang Chen said. Sneaking out of the city without clearance usually means foregoing enough provisions or the right knowledge to make it safely to the air temple. We have to patrol the surrounding areas on our bison to pick up the lost and stranded. You get turned around in these mountains and, well. What's going to happen? He asked, pointing his chin back inside. Abbot Sonam will send another team to search for her child. There might turn out to be more to that statement. One could only hope. She took in Kavik's taut, uneasy stance, the weight he kept on the balls of his feet, as if there were an opponent he could fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat for the fate of the missing boy. If only it were so easy. You can't let it get to you, she said instead. Wrote. Words she'd heard throughout more than one lifetime. You saved someone's life. You have to hold on to the victories and let go of the defeats, or else you'll never sleep again. He stared at his feet, as if better wisdom were buried in the dirt. Come, she said, chucking him in the arm. I was going to show you around the air temple. You need a few stories to tell your parents. I thought I was staying down here. I'm allowed on sacred ground? You're the Avatar's guest. You're allowed in a lot of places. Step back a bit. Yang Chen distanced herself before curling her tongue, pursing her lips, and letting out an ear-piercing whistle that started low and went higher and higher, to the point where a human could no longer hear it. A gigantic shadow grew around Kavik's feet. He warily leaped out of the way in case the noise had dislodged a chunk of snowpack or a boulder above them. No landslide came. Instead, Yang Chen's sky... <laughs>